Hello, Internet. I am here to talk about IT stuff again. Now, a question was posed by Ray Raybo Florida from a month ago. Sorry about the tardiness, but it's been it's been pretty hectic. What does an IT do? Nobody explains it in plain English. Everybody mumbles and no details. All the videos they talk about themselves instead of details like they. I one equals one to where they are now day one to where they are now and how things changed hours etc no they keep referring to fast food businesses mm, wasted my waited my time wasted my time all right I got you I know what you're talking about okay let me read this blurb that I pulled out Uh, this is from the navy.com slash careers slash information systems technician on uh, their about section. In the Navy, information technology, IT, plays an important role in everything from electronic mail systems to shipboard control systems to special intelligence SI systems. Navy information system technicians, IT specialists, are enlisted sailors who engage in a broad range of responsibilities, including network administration, database management, computer hardware and software implementation. Their responsibilities include operating and maintaining Navy global satellite telecommunication systems, serving as an admin on mainframe computers and local and wide area networks, implementing microcomputer systems throughout the fleet, serving as an important part of the information dominance core in its mission to gain a deep understanding of the inner workings of adversaries and developing unmatched knowledge of the battle space during wartime. All right, let me translate that, okay? The first part, the first bullet, operating and maintaining Navy Global System Telecommunication or Satellite Telecommunication Systems that has to do with the fact that IT, before it became IT, used to be two rates, R uh, RM and DPs. DPs are what you imagine IT used to be when you think of an IT that like will fix your computer, Geek Squad, right? Um, there's nuance there, but, and then Radio Man, um, that is the uh, the guys that handle the communications part of what an IT does. Now, just imagine any any kind of boat, not navy boat, right? Imagine a boat or like a plane. Those things out in the ocean, out in the sky, have to communicate because otherwise they're they're going blind. That's like not a good situation to be in if you're like flying through the clouds. So. Communication is key. Communication is what made Homo sapiens defeat the Neanderthals, apparently, with the big, mouthy, wordy noises that they made. Um, but um, a plane flying through the sky without eyes, essentially, eyes being radars that are on land, with, with, with it flying through the sky, they might hit something. You know, maybe. So it's up to the ITs to maintain these connections from the ship to the shore or from the plane to the tower or from the ship to the tower from the ship to another ship from the plane to another plane there's sub to sub you know there's there's different things this base and this base if those systems go down then it's no way for anyone but the those systems run on equipment that it's and et's uh, and whoever else is involved, depending on what the equipment is, will help fix. ITs will generally handle the actual connection, and ETs will handle the hardware, generally. This is super general. It's not the same everywhere, but at least from what I've seen on the last ship I was at, that's what it was. Now, the, um, you know, the, these systems allow the ship, um, to do its thing, allow the plane to do its thing, and like for this phone, now this is, short commands are slightly different, but the concept is the same. It might not be us, Navy ITs that do it, 
but they have contractors that do it that are like you know the same thing but they're civilians and they're probably part of a company like i don't know phone company whatever phone company you can think of those are all it's so that's the first part now the second part serving as admin on mainframe computers and local and wide area networks uh, this part is more of the IT side, the DP side, right? Data processor side. Now, every, again, don't think Navy for a second. Every establishment, every company, every organization will have a network because they need to. That way they can have employees do what they need to do and pull from the files that they need to pull from. You know, you can't just, you're not going to find, I don't know, Krabby Patty secret formula from the internet. You actually have to be working there and then have an account with them. I'm just an you know, example. I don't want to pull up some random fast food place that apparently you don't like uh, people talking about. But you have to work there to get an account and then that trusts you so that you can get the files so you can do your job. And uh, it's the same for the military, you know. You, you're at a place, they have a network, um, and then you know you have an account and then you can pull from the network with that account. That way you can do your job. Or you can use the applications that require you, that you require to do your job with, you know. So uh, we maintain that. And if something is wrong with a server, if, if the server belongs to you, like, you know, the, the command, then you obviously have to take responsibility and try and fix it. Now, um, sometimes it's real simple. Sometimes it's real difficult. Like, on a ship, if something's wrong with the server, just walk 10 steps, right? Probably open the server and, like, see if you can log on, you know, see what's wrong with it. Maybe there's a physical thing that's wrong with it. Maybe there's a network thing. Maybe this overall, the, the connection, like the communications link, right, went out. Um, you have to figure it out. <laughs> um, now, if it's, uh, if it's, it's a harder for, let's say, me, for a IT in a short command, especially if your short command is in charge of other short commands, so if, uh, if, if there is no IT in another base that we're in charge of, like our hospital, if the hospital in another city that we're also in charge of, in another base that we're also in charge of, goes down, most likely I will have to go there. Or one of the ITs here, military or civilian, will have to go there to physically check it out if we can't connect to it. So, I mean, that's here specifically. On the ship, it's different. Other commands are different. If the command is strictly a communications command, it will probably have a different way of doing things, but I have not been to said command yet, so I can't say for a fact what they do. I can say that for a ship, uh, managing the network was just a thing. <laughs> and it was, it was simple because it was all there, but it was also hard because it's a ship. And for a hospital, we may, we barely touch it, so uh, we maybe figure out physical connections, but that's about it. This next bullet, implementing microcomputer systems throughout the fleet. Microcomputer systems is um, where there's a network, you need a computer to access the network. Every employee will probably have a network, like a, the, my desk, right? Those are microsystems, microcomputer systems. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, based off the wording here. Now, um, this is this is where all the work is, <laughs> for me at least, as a system administrator, IT, at a short command uh, hospital, all the work for me is the microcomputer systems. So, trouble calls, right? My mouse is broken, the little, the little laser thing, right? It's not showing up. And then I have to go and like, look why it's broken. Maybe, maybe that USB port is not working. Maybe the mouse isn't working. Maybe the computer isn't working. Something, right? We have to figure it out. Now, 
um, depending on where you are, is how hard this is. And uh, because every place has different levels of their computers, you might have the latest and greatest, and then, or you might have something from the 60s. Who knows, right? But regardless, you have to be able to adapt as an IT, even in the civilian world, if you're gonna be, if you're gonna be like, I don't wanna go to the military, and then do just IT civilian stuff, even in the civilian world, you have to adapt to whatever's going on in the network or with the computers. And it, there's no like one plus one equals two with uh, IT stuff. Any IT will know this. Half of these problems are like weird made up problems that like just show up randomly. No one knows what's going on. <laughs> there, there's a general, there's a general way to do things, but it's never like, you know, if the screw is loose, tighten it. You know, the, it's never that easy. There's always some nuance to it. Like I, like I said, if let's say this monitor goes out, right? It could be the monitor, like maybe the LED is broken, maybe the jack is broken, maybe the cable is broken, maybe the connection to the computer is broken, the jack on the computer is broken. Um, maybe the drivers are broken on the computer, maybe the power is broken on the, on the, uh, the monitor, maybe the power is broken on the computer. Who knows? You just have to kind of like try to figure it out. <laughs> that's kind of what's fun uh, as an IT again civilian or, not, or military your main toolkit yeah the main thing in your toolkit will be google.com it is gonna be unfortunate though when your problem is that the internet is out for everyone and you don't have an internet like if you're on a ship and there's no internet obviously you can Google that's when all of the IT's have to come together and put their heads uh, heads together in a huddle to try and figure out why is it why is it down is it a micro issue with the computer is it a network issue is it a comms issue right is it a user error that could be a thing sometimes the user just didn't turn on the computer <laughs> it happens all the time and um, a big thing is customer service you learn customer service just, you know don't be mean <laughs> even if they're mean to you your job is to help them and be as nice as possible it is what it is um, you're not gonna yell at someone who is yelling at you while you're trying to take their order at, at Wendy's right you wouldn't do that hopefully otherwise you probably won't have that job afterwards but I digress um, was it like day one Day one, you don't know anything, zero. Like I said, Google is your best friend. Um, no matter how much school you did with the A school. Now also, you don't need to go to high school or high school. You don't need to go, scratch that. You don't need to go to college and get an IT degree, right? Or get certified prior to joining if you're gonna be in IT because, or any job in, in the Navy because they will, they will teach you. Obviously, there's a few rates that that doesn't apply to like musician. I think you have to know Some instruments like three of them before you, you join but for IT No need straight out of high school is the most likely to happen and it's fine because If you pick up fast You're gonna be at the same level as an IT who went to College and has a degree but like picks up slow Yeah, you might surpass them so you don't need to you don't need to know anything because it's all experience based. Um, day one you don't know anything. They're just gonna throw you in there. They're probably gonna make you do some basic stuff like hey make a few Ethernet cables right. Make like thirty of them. You just be doing making these cables. Or they'll they'll be like hey go with so and so go with this superior petty officer like in terms of rank. Go with him, and then he'll show you the ropes, or he'll have you do some. You're you're basically like an intern, not an intern. You're basically just like green, super green day one. Where, um, where are the, where they are.
are now. If for me, where am I now? Hospital. Second class petty officer. Uh, I know a thing or two, but I'm still pretty <laughs> still pretty, pretty green around the edges. Cause, like I said, there's no way to do IT that is uh, easily obtainable. You just kind of have to just do things and hope that that you can you can fix whatever you're trying to fix. How have things changed? Um, hasn't no no. It changes every day. Like I said, all these problems are weird, created, are weird like in, in imaginary problems that didn't exist like three hours ago, and then you just have to figure it out. So in terms of like stuff to do, it changes all the time. It's like keeps you on your toes, right? But um, I mean, in terms of the nature of the job, it's been the same since computers began. You're you're there to assist the customer. There's nothing really that changed in, in terms of that. Um, but in terms of the equipment, right? Changes all the time. You could go, you could have, like I said, you could have the best equipment ever at this place. Then you go to your next place and then they're like 20 years behind. Some you just have to deal with. It's good for you for knowledge because now you know how to fix that 20 year old equipment, let's say. I'm exaggerating, kind of, under 20 year, kind of, but, um, I mean, changes all the time, it's good. Hours, depends on where you're at, here, 9 to 5, for the most part, unless you're like me and you'd like to stay here for way longer than I need to, uh, because of stuff, but usually, this is, these are the times that let me do these videos, is when I stay at the hospital past working hours. But hours on um, short commands are typically nine to five unless it depends on what, if something's going on afterwards. But on a ship, random. <laughs> depends on where you're at. The, it could be the officer is saying stay longer to do something. Could be the, you know, that you're out at sea. Obviously you can't go anywhere if you're out at sea. You could be import. You it could the work could be like three hours. They could be like, all right, you checked in, you're good to go, and then you you just you know, go and hang out for the rest of the day. That could also happen depending on what's going on. There's a lot that be like if the ship is is not operational and literally everything's wrapped up in plastic. What really is there for an IT to do but like maybe hard labor? Like hey, sweep the floors, keep the space clean. You still have to keep your spaces clean. So that could be the extent of what you're doing. Or if it's duty, you know. There's variants. Typically it's either nine to five or you're there for life. Like <laughs> the, the two possible things um, for the most part. Um, uh, et cetera. I, I don't know what else to talk about really. I hope this helps you out. I, I hope you know that really being in IT in the military and being in IT in the civilian world, in terms of the computers, is practically the same. Um, I would I would argue that you're. It's easier to be in IT in the military because if you mess something up, you're not gonna get fired. <laughs> like if I accidentally bring down a server, I'll probably be all kinds of in trouble. But. I'm not gonna lose my job. You know what I mean? If you're a civilian IT and then you bring down a server, you, oh, whoo, whoo, I don't even wanna imagine what that's gonna happen, what's gonna happen there. But I hope this helps. If you have any questions, if anyone has any questions, I'm more than happy to answer, hopefully as soon as possible. Um, if, if what you're asking is huge, like like concept of like what does an IT do, that's a video. I'm not gonna that's if it's like, hey, um, you know, I don't know, how do you how do you fix an Ethernet cable, right? Then I'll tell me the info, I'll probably comment you the information. But again, concepts probably make a video. It's it's kinda it's kinda weird. <laughs> But yeah, uh, thank you for listening. 
thank you for being patient. And um, I, whatever it is that you're hoping to know, I hope I answered it again. Make another, ask another question. <laughs> all right. Well, I will see all of you next time.